that's go that that's going to be happening. And we will post it on the CELA website probably within about a couple of weeks after the webinar. So for people who are able to see the screen, what you're looking at is uh, Susan's tablet. You're viewing her screen. So without further ado, I'm just going to turn it over to Susan. Okay, thank you, Feline. Um, were you doing a, a bit of an introduction on CELA Library, or? Uh, I could. I had I, so basically, if people are not familiar, I'm assuming a lot of people on the line are probably familiar with CELA, CELA, or the Center for Equitable Library Access. It's a, a library for people with print disabilities, so people with visual, physical or learning disabilities, for whom it's uh, difficult or impossible to read regular print, they can um, access uh, library materials free of charge through CELA. And all that you need to sign up for CELA is a valid public library card number. There's a self-registration form on the CELA website or you can contact your local public library and they would be able to sign you up for CELA. So CELA has books in accessible formats, which includes books on CD, physical braille books. Uh, we also have an online library where people can access online audiobooks or uh, e-text, electronic text. There's a newspaper database and people can also access magazines through CELA. So if you're not familiar with CELA or if you want to sign up, it's a pretty easy process. And if you have questions about that, you can always get in touch with CELA's contact center. Um, they have a toll free number and an email address which you can find on CELA's website, which is celalibrary.ca. Okay, so I think that's a really brief intro introduction to CELA, but I'm gonna turn it over to Susan now, because I think uh, mostly what people are interested in is, is what she's gonna present today. So go ahead, Susan. Thank you so much. And hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. And I'm really, really very happy to uh, present uh, Easy Reader with VoiceOver, which uh, I know by experience being on the phones with maybe some of you um, and many of our other patrons, uh, sometimes using VoiceOver in apps can be quite challenging. So I am going to do my best in demystifying uh, Easy Reader and uh, explaining uh, further what is the direct to player service uh, as we go. Um, to keep with time for such a large group who will have likely a lot of questions, the only thing that I'm going to omit in demonstrating today is how to download Easy Reader, the app on your app store um, or Google Play, uh, simply because uh, that requires uh, people know their Apple ID or their Google Play ID and then installing the app. Um, some of you may already have it downloaded, some of you may not. If you need assistance with locating the app uh, on your online store and downloading it and setting up your Dolphin account, which you will need to do that when once you download the app, because it is a free app. So Dolphin, the developer, requires that you create an account, so an email address of choice and a password of choice. Then you need to authenticate that you are indeed the user of that email. And then the app will be uh, installed on your device and ready to go. If you need assistance with those steps, I invite you to contact uh, technical support. You'll be speaking either to me or my esteemed colleague, Spirit, and we'll uh, gladly uh, help you uh, go through those steps. So I'm going to focus really on the app itself. 
Um, and what happens after you've created your Dolphin account and you have now access to the app? Um, for those who are following along with their Easy Reader launched on the screen and their voiceover already functioning, I don't recommend trying to navigate in your app at the same time as the training. You may get lost, uh, lose your step, uh, not be able to follow, uh, you know, the flow of the of the training. I recommend that you wait to receive the recording of the of the training because that will give you the option to pause the recording and then try out the different uh, uh, pieces that I'll be demonstrating today. So today, I think uh, just being able to introduce this, um, give you an idea of what VoiceOver says, uh, talk about taps and some of the gestures, which way to navigate, all of these things. If you can just tune in uh, without touching your own screen, you may get a little bit more out of it. And then you can practice on your own in the recording. You can keep that and just practice as much as you like. So what happens after you've downloaded Dolphin Easy Reader You've created an account with them and you're logged in is that you're brought to the main screen which sort of looks like what's here on my screen right now um, <clears throat> if you switched from a daisy player to easy reader uh, you may have perhaps some books that will show up on screen because you already have you know you've already been using the direct to player service so that may happen for those who access it for the first time will really have a blank screen, meaning that they won't have any titles available to them at all. And I will be demonstrating all of that. So the first thing that happens when you launch Dolphin Easy Reader is that you need to let Dolphin Easy Reader know that you are a SELA library user. There are a lot of libraries around the world that make their service available through Easy Reader. It's, it's not an app that only SELA uses. There's a lot of different libraries. So for the app to understand that you are a SELA library user, you need to find your library in the list of available libraries and turn it on. And once you've turned it on, then we'll move to log you into your SELA account. And this particular step that I'll be demonstrating, you only need to do that once. When you turn the library on, you do that once and never again. Um, so I'm going to do that right now. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to um, understand the structure of the app at the same time. So what is the most important thing in the main screen is the side menu button. And that's exactly what VoiceOver says. Side menu button is the main button that allows you to bring up options, such as my books, manage libraries. And when you turn on your library, you will find SELA library in there. There'll be other things that are not pertinent to us, but those options, so my books, manage libraries, and SELA library <clears throat> will always come up in the list of options when you tap on the side menu. Generally in the main screen to navigate with uh, your, your fingers is to swipe to the right and swipe or swipe to the left to move back. The side menu button is typically always located at the top left of your screen. Um, and that's where we're going to go now. But I think I'm already on it. But just to be sure, I'm going to swipe to the right once. My book. Heading. And I'm going to swipe back to the left to see side menu button. if I was on it. And I was on it. So um, I'm going to now double tap. With VoiceOver, you always need to double tap buttons. My books, buttons. 
And so when you double tap the side menu button, again, there's a list that opens up. And the first option is My Books. So what we're going to be looking for now is the option that's called Manage Libraries, because we need to tell the app here that we belong to Sila and we need to turn it on. So I'm going to swipe to the right. Manage Library. That's the one I want, so I'm going to double tap that. Manage Library. Manage Library. Heading. And now there should be a bunch of libraries, and I'm going to look for Sila again by swiping to the right. Project Gutenberg. Switch button. On. Share. Switch button. Off. Mm, I might have passed it. I'm just going to swipe to the Switch left. Share. Double tap. Switch button. On. Project Gutenberg. Manage library. Heading. No, I didn't. Okay. Just Project wanted to Gutenberg. make sure. Switch button. On. Book share. Switch button. Off. Sell a library. Aha. Uh -huh. so there is the library. Sell a library. So I'm on Sila Library, but the actual switch to turn it on and off requires yet one more swipe to the right. Switch button, off. And it's at double off. Tap to toggle settings. Voice over saying double tap to toggle the settings, so I'm going to double tap to turn it on. On. It's now on. And to make sure. Sell a library. I swipe double to the tap left. Sell library information screen. Perfect. Switch button, on. And I swipe. Double tap to toggle settings back to the right just to make sure that I did hear it correctly that it's at on. So now that it's turned on, the next thing to do is to go back to the side menu button because that will bring back my options. Sell a library. Switch button. Off. Switch share. Switch button. On. So I'm swiping to, toggle setting. to the left. Project Gutenberg. Manage library. Heading. Side menu. Button. Side menu. Button. Manage library. Oh, side there menu. it is. Button. And I'm going to double tap the side menu. Manage library. And I'm still in the manage libraries option because that was the last one that I accessed. And I'm assuming now that in the main list here, see the library now appears. Um, when the library is turned off, it doesn't come up in the side menus list. That's why we need to turn it on. I'm going to swipe to the right to try and Project find it. Sell a library. There it is. And now I'm going to tap on it to actually open Username. Text field. the tap to edit. Sela library uh, in Easy Reader app. So now it, what comes up on the screen is the login screen. And the login information that we need to key in here is our Sela six-digit account number and uh, whatever password uh, we've been using to access the website uh, or, or the account itself. So I'm going to type in my account for today's demonstration. Word, username, text field. Double tap okay. to edit. Text field. Is that so a I have to double Search tap to that field to, Use the runner to access misspelled words. To actually type in something. Three. So it's in edit zero, mode. Zero. Three. Seven. And then I'm going to swipe to the next password. field. Password. Secure text field. And Don't that's have to edit. the password field. So I have to double tap on this field as well to put it in edit mode. Search and point that in. Okay. And I'm using a keyboard to actually type in the password. And I think I pretty much typed it in properly. And now the next thing to do is keep swiping to the right. So it's always a right swipe to move around in the screen. And what I'm going to be looking for now is the login button to complete the login. Login feature. button. There it is. So it's a button. We double tap. Waiting for Elizabeth. Sell a library. And sometimes it happens that we will log in and then voiceover just goes silent. He's not going to give us any feedback whether we have logged in successfully or not. This does happen from time to time. Um, voiceover is very helpful, but he does, does that sometimes. So to make sure that I am mm, successfully logged in, 
uh, I wouldn't have some kind of different content announced to me than user ID name and password and login button. So uh, let me explore here by swiping to the right. Logout button. Oh, I've got the logout button. Okay, that's good. The logout button is usually in the upper right hand side. It's represented by a, a graphic that looks like a right arrow. So as soon as we hear log out, that means we have logged in successfully. Otherwise, that option wouldn't be there. I'll keep swiping to the right. And the other two options that are, remain on the screen are direct to player bookshelf button and the search and browse button. And let's see if that's true. So swipe to the right. No library. Heading. Log out. Button. Direct to player bookshelf. Search or browse. There. So those two options are the ones that you are going to be using as, uh, as uh, Easy Reader CELA library users. Um, so let's explain the difference between the two. So the direct to player bookshelf is where any books that you order will be deposited for you to either listen by streaming or download to listen independently from the internet. This is the bookshelf that is intimately related to the bookshelf in your account at CELA. Um, and this is where you normally manage your titles inside Easy Reader. And what I mean by manage means borrowing, downloading, streaming, and returning your titles. Um, it's all done in here. Um, direct to player, the, the, those spe that specific term, direct to player, means it's the type of delivery system that is used to deliver your books. It goes from our servers through a cloud and then it goes into your app and it's delivered here wirelessly. So it's a wireless delivery of your item. We have uh, the mail delivery system at CELA Library, so that's specifically for CDs and physical Braille. Direct to player is for items that will be found in the CELA collection, uh, in uh, MP3, DAISY MP3 audio files, or from the Bookshare collection, which are uh, text-based, but have speech through a, a, a synthetic speech engine. And I'll get more uh, into that about the formats later. So uh, direct to player is really the delivery system that, that enables the titles to go virtually uh, through your wireless connection and delivered here in your bookshelf. So the next option on, on this screen, which is called search and browse, is an, a tool available through Easy Reader that allows you to find a title um, in the CELA catalog and request that it be sent to your bookshelf. Um, just so that everybody knows uh, and everybody's on the same level playing field, when it comes to ordering books, we've got many different options at CELA and uh, users will, uh, you know, will, will use whatever they prefer. So I'm just going to list how you can order books. One, you can contact us by email or by telephone and uh, give us your titles and we'll add them to your bookshelf. That's one way. The other way is that when you call the uh, main phone line at CELA Library, there is for longer book lists, like more than five books, um, the option number one on the, on the telephone keypad you can leave a recorded message of the titles, and it could be titles or uh, the catalog numbers uh, in, in a voice recording. And then so someone at the contact center then will fill in the order. Um, the other option is by logging into the CELA website, celalibrary.ca. You can search the catalog. And then when you have to select your format, um, in the long list of formats, the one for direct to player is Daisy Audio Direct to Player or Daisy Text Direct to Player. 
Um, so again, DAISY audio is a format. DAISY text is a format. Direct to player is the delivery type. Um, I often get calls, well, does DAISY audio zip work in Easy Reader? No, it does not. Uh, that's a self-serve type of format. That means you log in the website, you, you select that format, then you have to go in a different web page to manually download the titles yourself to copy them onto a thumb drive or uh, an SD card uh, and uh, and then maybe play it on a, on your on your daisy player or a computer or, or whatnot so for direct to player it's strictly the direct to player delivery type um and so when we get into the catalog, which I'm going to go there now, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna just demonstrate how you can conduct a search. I'm not going to initiate the request itself because we uh, are experiencing right now uh, delivery delays with the direct to player uh, service. So whatever title I may request may not appear until tonight <laughs> in the bookshelf. But I do have lots of titles that I preloaded on the bookshelf a few days ago in prep for today. So uh, not to worry, but I am going to go and demonstrate how we use the catalog here. Search or browse. So search or browse, I'm on that option. I swipe to the right, so I'm going to now double tap search it. Or search or browse. And what I recommend to voiceover users is when you access a new page like that, meaning a new layer within your app, it's good to uh, pretend you're Christopher Columbus. You should take your finger and swipe to the right, right up to the end, and then go back and swipe to the left, right up to the top. Become familiar with the lay of the land and what's available to you. Um, we can't guess what's on the screen, so we really need the help of our fingers swiping to the right to discover what's there. Um, so I'm going to do that right now. Uh, so the new page opened up. Not sure what's displaying right now. So I'm going to swipe to the right. Keyword search. Keyword search. That's probably one option. Browse by category. Browse by category. That's another option. Browse by category. Okay, that's good. I can't go any further. Those are the only two options on this page. If I go to the left. Keyword search. I go back to keyword search. Yeah. And then I've got the back option. That means it'll take me back to the previous layer where I was before. So uh, let's try and do uh, browse by category. Browse by category. Browse by, browse by category. And again, now a new page has probably come up. No idea what's there, so I'm going to swipe to the right. Animal stories. So that's one category. Award-winning fiction. And they're all listed alphabetically. Bestsellers fiction. Oh, good. Let's go into bestsellers fiction. So I'm going to double tap. There's probably about how many categories, uh, feeling maybe about 60 or so. Show results in bestsellers. Oh, we, we lost Celine, but No, I'm here. Right. Sorry. Yeah, Sorry. something Sorry. like that. There are quite a few categories. Mm -hmm. And you can and also they, you can also search uh, if you're doing a search, you can search by category. Yeah. So I chose bestsellers, and so I'm going to get anything that's a bestseller, from science fiction to mysteries, and there's probably several hundred. I would probably say even a few thousand titles in this category. Uh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> so, and there'll be a mix of results. We will have uh, Daisy Audio, Daisy Text, and then just Daisy. And these will be titles uh, all combined um, in uh, from the both the Bookshare collection and uh, the SELA collection. So I'm going to stop here for a moment to explain SELA versus Bookshare. So uh, SELA library has its own collection, which is mainly, I would say 90, 96% of it is Daisy Audio human narrated titles. So these are 
uh, MP3 audio files structured in something called the DAISY technology. And these are audio files, so they are all human voice read. And they can be either streamed, and I'll explain the streaming later, and or downloaded. Uh, we have, uh, I think we're running up to maybe about, what, 80, 90,000 titles in total in the collection in both combined French and English languages. Uh, so we are a bilingual service. There are also our magazines that we typically uh, have been putting, uh, you know, have been offering for years now in human narrated audio, and they are uh, uh, Good Times, Reader's Digest, uh, Chatelaine, McLean's, and uh, Canadian Geographic. Uh, we also have What's New, which is the um, a SILA newsletter that lists all of the newly added titles to the collection. We usually produce that in the audio format every uh, month or two months. And so the list that's there is typically what we have added in the last 30 to 60 days. <clears throat> um, and so those can all be delivered to your bookshelf. You can subscribe to any of those magazines by calling us or even just uh, logging on to the website and subscribing yourself. Um, Bookshare is a partner library based out in the U.S. To access Bookshare, there is an additional uh, form. It's a proof of disability form that needs to be completed and sent in to us uh, for you to gain access to that collection. Um, the proof of disability form is an added step uh, because uh, Bookshare has agreements with publishers, and that is a requirement for them to allow access to their collection. Uh, so uh, we help manage that. And if you decide to access Bookshare, you will have probably access to some additional oh, 800,000 titles. They are all text-based at the source, so they're available in digital text. You can view it on screen, um, but they also have uh, the audio version, which is synthetic audio. So it sounds a lot like voiceover when you are using synthetic audio bookshare titles on a smart device. If you're using it in a, in a Victor player, uh, a Daisy player, it, it has more of a mechanical voice, but when you're using it online like this, it sounds a little bit more natural, and uh, it actually reads out better. So I do encourage individuals to gain access to Bookshare because you do have a lot more titles available to you. Uh, there's a lot of academic materials up there as well, which are very helpful for students and, and, uh, and uh, educators and librarians as well if they have to look up something for their patrons. Um, <clears throat> So let me find just any title here in the bestsellers list. Information, button, Captain and the King, Taylor Caldwell, Daisy, okay. online. So Taylor Caldwell, well, I'm not really Look crazy about that. Button. Let me move to another Catholic. one. Sydney Rose Cardinal number three, Barbara oh. Nicholas, Daisy. No, that's online. number three of the series, so I'm not going to go back. Good information, button, win, Harlan Coffin. Oh, Daisy. there, win. Online. Good. That's one of the latest titles, mystery titles by Harlan Coben. Quick information. Button. Now. With Harlan Coben, Daisy. Line. So you see that it says Win Harlan Coben Daisy Online. Daisy, just the word Daisy alone indicates its format. And that means that it is a human narrated audio copy. So if you're swiping along and you hear DAISY online, that means it's a DAISY human narrated copy. If you hear DAISY audio online, that is a Bookshare title. That is a synthetic audio copy. I'm not sure why Dolphin built um, that in that way, but that's the way that you will distinguish between Daisy Audio Bookshare and Daisy, just simply Daisy, which is Sila. 
human narrated. Um, <clears throat> if you don't have access to Bookshare, uh, it will it will nevertheless allow you to attempt the download of a Daisy Audio Bookshare title, but it will never get delivered to your uh, bookshelf itself because uh, if you haven't handed in your proof of disability, it just won't deliver. So if you're only using CELA, the format that you want to be uh, you know, looking for here is simply DAISY. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to request this book, or I'm going to attempt to request this book. So again, the title is Win by Harlan Coben, DAISY Online. If I swipe one more time to the right, book information. Button. I have its book information. So I'm going to tap on that. And this is the screen that opens up to give you more information about the publication. Carla Coppins. Author. Carol Button. And then it's asking me to borrow, that I would actually do that if I wanted it delivered to my bookshelf. 20 years ago, Eris Patricia Lockwood was kidnapped. She got away, but so did her kidnappers. Items from the family are recovered when a recluse died, okay. including a suitcase belonging to my the cousin. My voiceover is... The cold case himself. My voiceover is a little fast, but that's a description of the title. So if you want to read it before you order it, you would then just keep swiping, and read format. the description. And here it says format is Daisy. Library, Sela Library. And the source, the library or the collection here is Sela Library. So this is an additional confirmation that this is a human narrated title. Right, Grand Central Publishing. <clears throat> and then you've got all of the bibliographical information. So who's the publisher, year of publication, likely the call number, um, the ISBN number, etc. If you're interested in that information, you can keep swiping to the right. Um, <clears throat> so now I'm going to go back to the left because I am interested in getting Library. this book. Library. Library. Format. Date 20 years ago. Eric Toro. Button. So if I would want this book, I would tap on Borrow. So Please that wait. will tap. The stream button. Oh, and it's actually allowing me to open it. Okay. Download button. Let's see if it's going to download. Or down the alert. Sell a library. Open a stream button. Um. Download button. Twenty years ago, Eris the download button. Open a stream download button. It's not allowing alert, me. Alert. Oh no. Sell a library. Sell a library. Okay. Support download, that means it's downloading. And not sure, Feline, if you can see on the screen if it's uh, actually downloading. The title is being processed and will be available oh, yeah. on your bookshelf shortly. Okay. Please check your bookshelf in a few minutes. So if I swipe to the right, it's actually going to tell me the status, and it, it is saying that it's it's going to be available in my bookshelf in a few minutes, but because of the delays, that can be a lot longer. So I've done what I had to do. Do I need to do anything else by swiping to the right? The title is being processed and will be available. Okay, button. And yes, I need to okay that message. So I'll double tap on okay. Open a stream, button. And now what do I do? Well, I don't feel like ordering anything else out of the catalog. So now, if I want to go back to where I was, what do I do? I need to swipe to the left and go way up to Carla the top Coppins. of the page. Yes. Book, button, quick information, heading, close, button. To close this particular window, double tap on the close yes. button. Carla Coppins, Daisy, online. And I'm back to the result page of the catalog of bestsellers. If I want to order more books out of this category, I would keep moving through by swiping to the right. Um, but I think we're going to just get out of the catalog itself. So to do that, I need to go find the back button to move me back to where I was before I entered here. So. Swipe to the left. Book information. Button. Ambush. Sydney Rose Cardinal number to book information. Button. Captives in the case. Take book information. Button. Tar baby. Tony Morrison. Show results in bestseller. Fixed logout. Button. Sell a library. Heading. Back button. Back button. There we go. Double tap. Back button. Sellers. Fiction. So it took me to the previous layer, which was the 
the page of, with all the list of the categories. So to move back to the previous layer to that, we need to swipe to the left. Animal stories, alphabet, number and pick adventure stories, tap. And then I tap on back. Or browse. So you're, you're, every time you tap on something and something opens up, you, to move back or to close whatever it is on screen, uh, you need to always swipe to the left because the option to move back or to close is usually found at the top, the top part of your screen, more normally to the left. Um, and so you move back a layer. Every time you move back a layer, you search for the back button by swiping left. So if I was in the catalog now, the list of bestsellers, I should be back at the previous layer, which was the search by keywords or search by browse by catalog, just to be sure I'm going to swipe. Hello, library. The title is being processed and will be a okay button. Oh, I didn't. Right to player bookshelf. For some reason. Direct to player bookshelf. Log out. Button. Sell a library. Side menu. Button. Okay. Sell a like. Log out. Button. So I am. I had another message there. I'm not sure why. Direct to player bookshelf. So now I'm back. Search or browse. In my main page here. I'm just going to go back search to search and browse, search or browse. Just to demonstrate the keyword search. Word search. So if we choose keywords oh, fit, this Canada. time. Oops. English. U.S. Okay. Default. Browse by category. Keyword search. Keyword search. Alert. Search by title or author. So I can search by title or author. Text field. Is editing. Character mode. I'm going to, edit. I swiped to the right to get to the search box. And of course, uh, you have to be in edit mode. So if you don't hear voiceover saying is editing, then you need to double tap to put it in edit mode. So I'm going to search for... Um, Let's say Sundown, which is a Nora Roberts title. And so once I type that in, I will swipe. Yeah, button. I have the option to cancel the search okay, button. or to OK the search to initiate it. Loading, elicit. Loading, elicit. And I'm Sundown, my Blakely, Daisy, oh. online. Okay, so I have a, 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 a search result page. Uh, and so there is a come sundown by a, someone, uh, Lauren Blakely, I think it was. Mike Blakely, but yes. Okay, Mike Blakely, online. thank you. It says it's a Daisy online title. Okay, that's good. It's a human narrated title, but I'm looking for Nora Roberts. Click information button. So I'm going to keep swiping. Come sundown, a novel, Nora Roberts. Daisy. Oh, good. Online. So there's the Daisy Online. That's the uh, Sila human narrated version. I'll keep swiping button. just to show you what the Bookshare one would look like. Or Come sound like. A novel. Nora Roberts. Daisy Audio. 1.60 MB. Online. So that's what the uh, Bookshare one would sound like. It, it will say, and I'll repeat it Book again. Information. Button. Come sound down. A novel. Nora Roberts. Daisy Audio, 1.60 MB, online. So uh, it, it's, it's a Daisy Audio, and it's at a 1.6 MB, so that's megabytes, and that's a Bookshare version. So if you want to listen to the Bookshare version, you would then Book information. swipe okay. uh, to the right and tap on uh, the book information and then proceed to request it by uh, borrowing or downloading. Um, <clears throat> so, how to go back now? Again, I will uh, move back Come sound down. with Mike, Blake, book information. Button. Come sound by down. swiping Nora to Robert. the left. Baby text. Book information. Come sound down. North show results and keywords. Log out. Button. Sell a library. Back button. Back button. For search. And I'm back at my search options, which was keyword search and Browse the by following one is browse by category, but I'm done with my searches. So again, I will swipe to the left to look for the back button yeah. to go back to the search previous screen. 
And now I'm in, I heard it say I'm in search and browse. So that was the option in uh, the page where we normally find logout, direct to player bookshelf, and search and browse. So I want to go to the bookshelf now, take a look at what's available to me to start listening. Direct to player bookshelf. So I swiped back once. So swipe to the left once because uh, there are only really two options to work with here. So direct to player bookshelf and search and browse. So bookshelf is always the first one. Now, when you have a lot of titles on your bookshelf, um, it Lessons in chemistry, A novel, Bobby Garmin, <laughs> Daisy, 164.28 MB. The bookshelf, the bookshelf run, can run, 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 run. Emily has. The bookshelf can take time to load. I've seen bookshelves with some 80, 90 uh, titles, and then people call in and say, you know, there's nothing in my bookshelf, and it's just not presenting anything. You you need to let it leave it for a few more minutes. If you have a weaker internet signal at home, it can take a bit longer. So uh, it, a lot of books will uh, equals uh, a bit more time for the items to appear. So when you open up your direct to player bookshelf, this is where you find all of the titles that you've requested. If you're also signed up for auto select, meaning you've identified your preferences to us, favorite authors, favorite categories, you will also find your daily deliveries of auto-selected picks in here as well. This is also where your magazines would be delivered if you are uh, subscribed to any. Um, <clears throat> there are also magazines in DAISY text format, which uh, are an additional uh, lineup of, uh, oh, I, I don't know, some maybe 50, 60 magazines like uh, The Economist and uh, o by Oprah Winfrey, and uh, there are so many different popular magazines that you can also get in uh, Daisy Text, so that would be with synthetic speech. If you're signed up to those, uh, they will all be found here. How this is organized is whatever's at the top of your list are the oldest ones that were requested. So the more recent ones that you request will be found at the bottom of your list. Um, you when you when you want to find a title you're interested again it's a question of swiping to the right or swiping to the left um, until you find it when you come about a title that you would like to read you swipe once more to the right you will have again that button called book information and that is the tool next to each title that will allow you to manage your title. Return it, borrow it, download it, stream it. Um, the book information button for those who are looking at the screen, I believe, Aileen, it's like an eye in a circle, right? That's right. And it's on the right hand side of the screen. So for those who are visually looking, the title and that specific button look like one, you know, on one line. But for those who do voiceover, it's really two gestures. One swipe to the right to hear the title, and then another swipe to the right to actually get to that book information tool. Um, so I know in here I've got uh, uh, lessons in chemistry, if I remember correctly, run, rose, run. I put in The Economist as well, so I have a whole bunch of things here. Um, <clears throat> so let me demonstrate uh, first to you uh, a Daisy Fila title in human narrated uh, audio. Um, and if you haven't read Lessons in Chemistry, you should. It's a fantastic book. Lessons in so. Chemistry, A novel, Bonnie Garner, Daisy, 164.28 MB. Okay. Online. So the 164.28 MB is the weight of the file. So if you choose to download it, you know how much space it's going to take on the hard drive of your memory. If you're streaming it, it doesn't really matter. Um, some people like to know because they store pictures and videos and all kinds of things on their iPad and they don't have a lot of free memory. So 
they know if they can stream or download it. Um, so the wait does help to know that. So to open up this book, book information button. I swipe to the right and I'm going to double tap on book information. Listen, chemistry, A novel. Okay. Um, so in here, uh, you'll get some information about the book, but you'll be presented with generally with two options, return or borrow. So if you don't want to read this, for example, we auto pick this for you. And after you read the blurb here while swiping to the right, it's not really something that interests you. Well, don't bother any further with it. Just find the return button and follow the prompts on screen to confirm the return. So if uh, the return button, usually when you open up this part here, it's usually one swipe to the left or maybe two. Let me see. Return book. Button. Yeah, so it's one swipe to the left. So I'll demonstrate a return shortly, but for now we're going to move to the borrow option. Lessons in chemistry. I want to show you. Bobby Garnet. Pro. Button. Show you the options here. So borrow. Please wait. Pro. Button. Open a stream. Button. And it's important to listen to voiceover. A lot of people don't listen to it. When it says please wait, it really means please wait. Don't don't touch your screen until it's done and it, it it's it's finished delivering what it needs to deliver to you as your next step. So here we have the first option which is open a stream. And if I swipe to the right, download button. I have the download option. The difference between the two. Streaming absolutely needs for your device to be in your Wi-Fi zone to feed this book wirelessly through you while you are connected online. It's sort of like listening to a live broadcast on radio. You, you need to be in your home with your radio on to listen to it, and it's feeding live to you. If you are planning on going on vacation and you know you're not going to have Wi-Fi wherever you're going, the cottage, a hotel, uh, some faraway land, uh, you, you want to listen to your book on the plane, uh, while there's turbulence, the pilot puts on, you know, put your devices on airplane mode on, uh, you disconnect the wireless, uh, you, you're going, I don't know, to a doctor's office and you want to listen to the book in a waiting room where you cannot have access to internet um, and or you know that your access to internet is choppy because if you're streaming and your internet is choppy, your reading is going to be choppy. Well, what you're going to want to do is opt for the download option. And when you download that, you are saving it to in a temporary place in the hard memory of your device and then you can listen to your title without the internet. And most people do that. So Open a stream. Download. I'm Button. going to now initiate the download by double abort tapping. Button. Does abort download? If I want to abort it, meaning cancel it right away, I would quickly double tap that, but I'm not going to do that. Open a stream. Button. Button. Okay. And when it's done downloading, that abort option goes straight to open option. That means it's downloaded and it's ready to open. So I am going to open. I'm going to double tap that. Okay. Use the rotor to access 15 seconds, 2 minutes, 5 minutes, book to call, mm. heading 1 only, audio speed. Okay. So now I'm on the play option. So I would just simply double tap to start playing. Uh, on this particular screen, you have options to set your skip uh, increments. So if you want to move back a few seconds, a minute, a chapter, a page, uh, each daisy book is structured differently. And we usually announce its structure right at the beginning of the, of the audio title. Um, it's that same message that says this uh, Daisy audio book was produced in the studios of the and so on and so on. And it will say, you know, you can navigate level one by page, by minute, by phrase. And not every title is structured the same way. So uh, if you are a person who tends to fall asleep on your title, then I would definitely use those options to kind of move back uh, in, in a logical way. Um, if you know you've missed maybe uh, you know 20 minutes of your text and you would want to set it to minutes and just 
kind of flip back if, if by chapter you you can choose that the speed of the reading can also be adjusted on this page um, and I believe also uh, you have a time set, like if you wanted to just stop after a certain amount of time. Most people don't use that because uh, as soon as you close the app, uh, you pause your text and you close the app. When you open it again, it will just resume from where you left off. Uh, if if the, the app is not respecting that, that means that you didn't successfully close your app for it to kind of resume normally. So something went quirky by leaving it on, on, on all night and, uh, and then you're just not able to resume. So it's really a good thing, a good practice to turn off your app. Um, so it's on play. I'm just going to now double tap. Lessons in Chemistry, a novel. Penguin Random House Audio presents Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. Read for you by Miranda Raisin. Featuring a bonus interview with Bonnie Garmus, conducted by Pandora Sykes. Okay, if I Chapter to... 1 November 1961. Navigation setting. Next. Back in 1961. Now, when I just wanted to pause that. Now, when you when you tap on play, your your focus remains on that button, and it automatically switches to pause. So you don't really need to swipe or anything. You just need to double tap the screen anywhere. It really doesn't matter. You're going to activate the pause button, and your focus still remains on the pause button. So if you want to resume, you just double tap anywhere with one finger to resume the reading. I'll demonstrate. 1961, when women wore shirtwaist dresses and joined garden clubs and drove legions of children around in... So when I had uh, tapped play, I really tapped in the center of my screen and then I said, okay, I'm gonna now pause it again. I tapped in the bottom right corner. So it really doesn't matter where you are in the screen your focus is locked into that button. So it's very easy to just pause and play, play and pause. Um, so now the copy that I downloaded, um, it got saved in my hard drive. And it, it saves in the hard drive, but it will remain also on your direct to player bookshelf. So you essentially have sort of like a master file, which is in your direct to player bookshelf, and you've got a saved copy in a temporary location uh, on the hard drive of your, of your tablet. And that temporary location on your hard drive is linked to another option that you will find by tapping in the side menu called My Books. And people often try to manage their titles out of my books. I don't recommend this. You can perhaps delete and return the book from my books, but it's always better to do that, you know, manage any titles uh, out of the SELA library in the side menu. You go to SELA library and you go to direct to player bookshelf and you manage it from there. When you return a book from Direct-to-Player Bookshelf, it's going to remove it three ways. It's going to remove it from your Easy Reader Bookshelf. It's going to remove the temporary copy that's been saved in my books. And it's going to remove it out of your account in our servers at the account level. So it's really clearing it out properly out of all of these locations in one place, which is your Direct-to-Player Bookshelf. I don't recommend managing titles from my books. My books is a good place to go to when you know you've kind of moved away from your title and you want to go back to your downloaded copy and just continue playing. Then yeah, it's okay to go to my books to hit play, but you can also do that as well in the direct to player bookshelf. So I really recommend that you try to stick to direct to player bookshelf and don't be so bothered with my books. Um, 
So if I do want to, right now, I am in my books. Um, as soon as we download a copy and it's ready to open and play and we play and we pause and we play and we pause, Easy Reader automatically took us out of our direct to player bookshelf and placed us in my books because that's where this temporary downloaded copy is saved. So that's where it's operating out of now. So if I want to go back to my direct to player bookshelf, I've got to go back to side menu. So I'm going to go back to the left, side to the left. Use book options, button, and audio settings, I'm button, going text to settings, lessons in chemistry, bookmark. Button, search, button, and I don't have to button. do, there we go, quite a few gestures because side menu is right at the top left corner. So I'm going to double tap. The library. And I'm going to go Sign back to the library. The library. The library. Sell a library. Heading. Logout. And I'm going to, to player go back to direct to player bookshelf. Show results in direct to floating. Ellipsis. Lessons in chemistry. A novel. Bonnie Garmus. Daisy. On device. Okay. And now it says, Daisy on device. On device means the status of this book is that it has been downloaded and it's in your device. So it's a good indication for you to know that your book has been downloaded. It, there's a downloaded copy in your in your machine. Um, so I'm going to return this. Let's pretend that I've already finished reading it. Book information. And I do recommend this book. It's actually fantastic. Okay. So I went back to book information, and remember, it was one swipe to the left to return remove the book. title. Lessons, remove book. Button. Remove book. Oh, good. Yes, I want to remove it. Alert. Remove book. So alert. Remove book. That means that there's something else on my screen, and to know what it is, I need to swipe to the right. Do you want to remove the book from the device? Do I want to remove it? Yes. Yes. Button. So I swipe to the right to yes button. And if I don't want to, I made a mistake, the next cancel. option Button. is cancel. Well, let's move yes. back Button. to yes. Book. Button. Please wait. Rose, run. A novel. Dolly Parton. Daisy. 142.35 MB. Okay. Online. So it, uh, so it went away, and it moved me to the next book down the list, which is Run, Rose, Run. I'm going to demonstrate now uh, a Daisy text. Um, so I'm going to go find uh, The Economist, which is a magazine in text format. Book information, button, book lover, Emily Henry, Daisy, 156 book information, button, spare, the Duke of Sussex, Prince Harry, Daisy, 215.87 MB. So I All am right. swiping always to the right. Book information, button. The Testament, A Novel, Margaret Atwood, Daisy Text, 230.50 oh, MB. That's a Daisy online. Text online title, but I want the Look information. Button. A World of Curiosity, Chief Inspector Armand Gamash, number 18, Louise Penny, Date Book Information, Button, Reader's Digest December, 2022, Daisy, 55.38 MB. That's still the Online Book Information, Button, What's New December, 2022, Date Book Information, Button, The Economist January 14, uh -huh. 2023, Daisy Text, 2.83 MB. Line. And of course, text books weigh a lot less. Like this is just two megabytes, whereas a book could be about 200 megabytes. Book so information. Button. They do take up a lot less room when you download the Economist January 14, 2023. So I did swipe to the right and tap on book information. Now, because this is a text file, the streaming option is not available. Streaming can only work with videos and with MP3 audio files. It cannot work with text. We cannot stream text. So download is likely the only option I will have. Download button. Yeah, and I'm going to download. Abort download button. And it switched to abort download. That means it is downloading. When it's done, it should then say open. open button. Yeah, and there is open. So I'm going to double tap that. And again, you are locked into these buttons. So it doesn't matter where you tap on the screen. Economist, January 14, 2023, heading level 1. The rotor to access 15 seconds, 2 minutes, 5 minutes, book default, page, heading, heading 1 only, heading 1 and 2 only, audio speed. So it is telling you uh, the navigation levels here. You can uh, move in increments of 15 seconds. Uh, I heard level 1, level 2, page, uh, and so on. So 
Um, if that's helpful to you, you might want to listen through that information as soon as you open the title. The Economist. January 14th. This work has been reproduced in alternative format for the exclusive use of people with print disabilities under copyright law and includes full text and images. Okay. So uh, this is a blurb that you will hear all the time. Captions are not provided. Captions are not provided. We would like interrupting the flow for those use. Any typographical errors originate with the publisher and we are unable to fix them. So because this is text, I'm swiping through all of the text. If I want to play, the button would be somewhere a little bit more towards the Matt bottom. Head, level one. The Economist. Matt Head. Head, The Economist. Published in September to take part in an editorial off Amsterdam. Black Square. Amsterdam. Beijing. Amsterdam. Beijing. Black Square. The world is weak. Separator. Get load next. So that's what I want to look for, is load next. Load next. Image. Right arrow. Load next. Load next. Double tap on that. Politics. Heading level two. The world is weak. Heading level three. Politics. Heading level three. Image. Separator. Get load next. Load next. Image. Okay. Load next. She denies any wrongdoing. Thousands of supporters of Jair Bolsonaro. Who was? Heading level three. Still. President until narrowly loses. They smashed offices at Luis Benacio. Mr. Bolsonaro, who has been in Florida since December, distanced himself from the violence. A few days later, he posted a video which once again questioned the validity of the election result. So this is obviously very fast, but if you want to have a continuous reading, there is an option here which I can't through. seem to find Following it right the now. At least 19, Dina Bollinger, she denies any Mexico. Security force, at least 29 people, at least 29. Just Security that. forces arrest, at least 29 people. Security forces arrested, at least 29 people were killed in the ensuing violence. Security forces of at least 29 the arrest makes Joe Biden met Mr. Lopez operator and Justin Trudeau, his Mexican and Canadian counterparts, to discuss further economic integration at a summit in Mexico City. Yeah, so you kind of got to swipe through the different paragraphs here, but with the books themselves, the, the reading is fluid. I think with the, with the magazines, you do have to swipe through. The, the articles are quite short. The Gathering of the North American. Um, North American. And... Red. Oh, here, play. Thousands okay, no, there is a play. of Jair Bolsonaro, who was Brazil's president until narrowly losing an election in October, stormed the presidential palace, Congress and the Supreme Court in an attempted insurrection. They smashed offices and attacked journalists and the police. Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, the new president. Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, the new president. Put security in Brasilia, the capital, under the control of his government. Mr. Bolsonaro, who has been in Florida since. Distanced himself from the violence. Okay. Oh, so, for, uh, Susan, I don't know what happened, but we lost your screen. We can't see okay. the screen anymore. What has to do has stopped you too. You have stopped. Okay. Button. Go to application. Button. Go to application. Okay. Also, I should let you know it's about 10 minutes after sharing. three. Hmm? It's about three, 10 seven. minutes after three, just in terms of oh. time. Okay, um, we're almost done. If oh, some okay. people would like to start asking some questions while I just resume the screen, that would be great. Sure. Well, there, I've got a couple here that I've taken note. Someone asked, um, can you use Voice Dream Reader to read CELA books? Yes, you can. The difference between Voice Dream Reader and Easy Reader is simply that uh, Voice Dream Reader costs. Um, I don't know what the cost is, maybe some $30 or so. And Easy Reader is free. Uh, Voice Dream Reader is not uh, accepting the direct to player delivery system. That only works with Easy Reader. So for Voice Dream Reader, you would have to log in to celalibrary.ca in Safari or uh, in Google if you're using um, uh, a yeah, Samsung uh, device. You log into the website, you search for your book, and in this case, the format, you would choose Daisy Audio Zip. It's going to download to your tablet or phone, and then it's going to ask you how you want to open it. If you have Voice Dream uh, reader installed on your device, it will be listed as one of the options, and that's the one that you would uh, tap on to initiate your, your reading. And there's a tip here from someone, uh, Tim, in the chat. He says, the voiceover magic tap can be used to start and stop play within Easy Reader 
without having to navigate and activate the on-screen play button. So just for people, some information, yeah. added information about voiceover. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, different uh, things that we can do with voiceover. Um, typically, I, uh, when I speak to people on the phone, they're novices and most of the time, and sometimes showing things the long way is helpful so that they know, um, you know, what's on the screen and how to go where. But yes, indeed, you can definitely do that. Another question was, is it possible to adjust the speed of voiceover? Yes. So when you are in that screen where you hit play and pause, in um, you would swipe then uh, to the left to go up more towards the options where you can adjust your audio. There'll be an audio uh, uh, um, adjustment and you can definitely adjust the speed. And then someone asked, can you log in to Easy Reader on both an iPad and iPhone at the same time? And if so, Will the books in the same account be in sync? Yes, they will. Okay. And then there was one more question here. Can you read Daisy text on a Kindle app? No. Yeah, I thought the answer to that was no. And those are all the, question that I, the questions that I've seen so far. There were questions about Bookshare, which I answered, but maybe I'll just repeat it in case. So if you want access to Bookshare titles, um, you first you need to be signed up for CELA. And then Bookshare, so in order to access CELA resources, you don't need to provide any kind of proof of disability. But Bookshare is a separate library. It's a US-based online library for people with print disabilities that operates under US copyright law. So they do, if you want access to Bookshare titles, you can get that access for free through your CELA account, but you do have to provide a Bookshare's proof of disability form. It has to be signed by a qualifying authority and you can find that form on the main page or the home page of the CELA website which is celalibrary.ca under the heading Bookshare. So once you get, once that form is filled out and signed, you can return it to us and then we, we will go into your account and give you access to Bookshare titles. And you access Bookshare titles from the CELA website. So hopefully that's uh, clear. And I think that's all the questions that I saw for now. Uh, Susan? I'm not able to uh, get back on for some reason. Okay. I don't know what I did myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, but that was really the last thing that I was going to demonstrate is just the text format. So um, the, the play button is more towards the bottom left hand of the screen. And um, so sometimes you need to put your finger on the screen and kind of move around in that area to find the play button if you want to hear um, you know the the synthetic voice that goes along with listening to the magazine if you want to listen through to an article by moving you know at a slower pace you can swipe with your fingers and and then you would look to load next is to move to the next page and there are other um, options to move through the the magazine by heading or subheadings. Uh, it looks um, like someone has their hand up. Linda Bartram, do you have a question, Linda? I do, and I'm I'm yeah. sorry I came in late, so you may have covered this, and I'm not very good with using the chat box. So okay, <laughs> go ahead. Um, yeah, so um, I've always gone to book information to and uh, not book information, the book title to download or stream uh, uh, the, the book. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm wondering if that's right, if I should be doing it from the book information um, position ra rather than the book title. You know, I've, never had, tried... I've had 
I've had some challenges with returning the book, and I'll tell you about that after, but if you can answer the, this first, yeah. I never tried myself just by tapping on the title because I know the, the book information tool is where all of the options are properly presented. Um, I, I think maybe the main difference would be, uh, and I'm going to try that in just a moment, would be uh, that if you tap on book information, I think you're taken almost straight or if not one, one step away. No, I think you are taken straight to the borrow button. Um, and then you swipe once back to, to do the return or remove button. Correct. Um, yeah. But I think if you tap on the title itself, and this is just by deduction that I'm answering this, I'll just have to try it in a second. You're, you're, you're opening, uh, you know, the description of the book, the call number. Eventually, when you swipe, you will get to borrow and return. Um, but I think... You know, for, for the options to manage your title, you're probably best at, at tapping on book information. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's the challenge I've had because I've had problems returning the book. And and what has happened is it stays on my, it's, it, somewhere it's still on there and I have no way of sending it back. It's almost like if I don't remove it from the book, from the device first and then, and then, um, and then return it, because I have to do two steps normally. This is what I found. If I if I just return it and I haven't removed it from the device, somehow it stays on there, but I have no way then of getting rid of it. Um, and I've had to actually, um, you know, unload the uh, the Sela app and reload it in order to get rid of these things. And they fill up. You know, it ends up. I it tells me I don't have any room anymore. So I'm just wondering if it's the order in which I'm doing things that's wrong. And that's why this is staying on there. And I noticed you said that when you're returning the book, do it from book information. No, yeah, do it from, from the direct to player bookshelf. Don't. Oh, you know what? I'm you know, probably doing it the other way around. I'm doing direct to player yeah. bookshelf to open it and then book information to return it. <laughs> Well, the, the book information button is is the button that's like a it's like an eye in a circle at, at the right of each title in the direct to player bookshelf. I think you're referring to my books. Is that correct? So there are two folders. Uh, when you do side menu button, yeah, you, and you swipe to the right, the first option will be my books. And then if you swipe again, you'll have Manage Libraries, and then further down, you'll have Sela Library. So yeah, no, if you I are, know the I know the if, difference of those two. I I, I know okay. when I'm in in the the bookshelf and when I'm in my books, but okay. but if if I'm talking about when you're in bookshelf, you have the title and you have book information. Hmm. Yes, I, I think, think I understand what you mean because I've seen I've been in my books before and I've tapped on the title and the return option wasn't available to me. Um, so I think it's safe to say that you should always do it out of book information button and, and if even better, out of the direct to player bookshelf rather than my books. Yeah, well I think, see, it's still sitting there in my books, but, but it's not on my direct to player bookshelf anymore, so I can't, I can't return it. I think, so, I, yeah. I think I might have to interrupt here just because we're running quite a bit over time. It's 3.20. Um, so what I would suggest to people is, you know, with like, to get a complete answer to your question, uh, maybe get in touch with the contact center and I've put their information in the chat the toll-free number as well as uh, the um, as well as the email address because I noticed that people are having to drop off because of the time. Yeah, I, as I said before, I don't, I, I can't, I'm, I'm not good at accessing the chat while I'm on this call, so I won't have access to that, but I know I can get a hold of them. I know how to get a hold of them. Yeah, so I, I recommend that you call because if it's not in your direct to player bookshelf anymore, the link has been broken with the copy in my books. And so someone at tech support has to assist you with that. Okay, I will do that then. Thank you. And the other, okay, the other question was sometimes I get no books available and, and, an, and a number, um, four, four or something or other, it's about a six or seven digit number. Um, which 
That, that, that means your bookshelf, your, your SILA login is frozen. It, it might have lost connection with your internet at some point. So what you need to do is go to SILA library, you go to log out, and you log back in. You refresh your, your login. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Thank you. Okay. I think um, uh, I'm just cognizant of time and how many people we're losing. Um, maybe, uh, Susan, if there is any sort of, I'm just going to ask people if you do have other questions to get in touch with the contact center. Uh, and uh, Susan, if there's any kind of last remarks you want to make. Um, well, I hope you all enjoyed uh, the training. Um, and yes, there are gestures that you can do in voiceover or with voiceover to accelerate access. If you're just starting out, do it the long way so you, you know and understand the lay of the land in Easy Reader. And if you need some tips on how to you know, um, move back several pages and a list of results and things like that, you can call us, we can give you those, those gestures to help you move faster. Okay, great. Well, thanks so much, Susan. And as I mentioned, we have recorded today's webinar. So we will be posting it on the CELA website probably within a couple of weeks. So you'll be able to go over things that you may have missed today. And thanks to everyone here. And don't forget to get in touch with the contact center with any questions you have that uh, maybe didn't get answered today. Okay, so thanks, Susan, and thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye.